All right, college football fans, it's episode 39 of Walk It Off with Chappie and part two of our July 4th triple header. So we're looking at the red and white of the NC State Wolf Pack, headed by Dave Doran, a coach who has done great things there in Raleigh. He's gone 64 and 49 in his 10 seasons or nine seasons with the Wolf Pack. This is year number 10 after an impressive run at Northern Illinois in the MAC. So Let's see how they're gonna fare in 2022. You start on offense and there's a lot to like and it starts at quarterback with Devin Leary. Now this is a guy who has gotten better each year. And when I say that, he's gone from good to great. So in 2020, he completed 60% of his passes, up that to 66% last year. He went from an eight to Two, or an eight to two touchdown to interception ratio in 2020. Last year he went 35 touchdowns to just five picks. Um, he can throw the ball all over the yard and he's got receivers that rave about him. Recently departed Ameka Amizi said that he is one of the best quarterbacks he's ever seen, not just played with, but seen, and has high praises for him. And he's bringing, Leary is, a lot of his pass catchers back this year headed by Thayer Thomas, one of my favorite players in college football, so shout out to number five there for the pack, as well as Devin Carter. His deep threat averaged 18 yards per reception. Thomas, not too shabby in his own right, he averaged 12 yards a catch. The two of them combined bring back 14 touchdown receptions from a year ago. You combine that then with Porter Rooks, who was a pretty, pretty highly touted recruit when he came in, as well as Keon Lassane, who had an outstanding spring, and then Daryl Jones, a transfer from Maryland, who uh, did some good things in College Park. And then you add in the tight ends, Trent Penix and Christopher Trudel. Solid, uh, reputable tight ends. And then the Seabro brothers, Fred and Sed, gives them really three or four candidates to throw the ball to in the intermediate passes. So who's gonna be protecting them? Some really good offensive linemen. They bring four starters back led by center Grant Gibson and guard Dylan McMahon. Those two should lead the way and should be all ACC in 2022. Bryson Spees has played and logged a lot of minutes on that offensive line. He's been a warrior and should get more start time this year. We should see him at either right or left tackle for a an entire season. And speaking of a full season, they're hoping that Chandler Zavala, who was granted a sixth year medical hardship, he comes back and will probably man one of those guard or the other guard position opposite Dylan McMahon. So the big question mark on offense is in the backfield at running back. So Jordan Houston is a, a good serviceable running back, uh, not nearly as capable, I don't think, at least this year, as Knight or person were the last couple of seasons. So if he is not the the home run threat that they are looking for out of that, keep an eye out for a true freshman Michael Allen who was in for the spring and also a guy that I like, a guy who showed some thunder and lightning, uh, Demi Sumo Kangbaye, a sophomore. I really get excited watching him and, and liked what I saw this spring. So maybe one of those two, Allen or uh, Sumo Kangbaye, can emerge and either complement Jordan Houston or maybe even uh, take the reins by season's end. So uh, they were very good at protecting the football. Only 11 turnovers last year, six fumbles, and then the five interceptions we talked about from Devin Leary. And, you know, a great passing offense as well. Very, very efficient. And what else would we expect from Tim Beck, who is one of the more reputable offensive coordinators and a, uh, a good quarterback guy in his own right? So as much as people like the offense, it's the defense that's even better for them, I think. I mean, look at these numbers. Uh, they were top 15 in third down defense, pass efficiency defense, and scoring defense. They also had the 14th best amount of interceptions or most interceptions from any defensive unit in the country last year. <clears throat> They were also number 21 in total defense and number 22 in rush defense. So they can put the clamps on you. They can lock you up. And they did a pretty good job of that last year. Uh, best linebacking core in the ACC. One of the best in the entire country. I have them ranked as the second best overall linebacking group in the NCAA. You get Peyton Wilson, who's hopefully healthy. He's had some problems with both sets of shoulders. So hopefully he can put a full season 
together again this year and join up with Isaiah Moore, who also is, they're hoping, can stay healthy. He got banged up last year. And how about my man Drake Wilson, number 32. This is a guy, I'm sorry, Drake Thomas, Drake Thomas, number 32. He led the Wolfpack in tackles, sacks, tackles for loss, interceptions, and he was number two in quarterback hurries, and he had nine of those. Okay, so that was number two. He had nine of those buggers. <clears throat> So they'll be flying all around the field, and they go deep behind those three as well. And they had to because guys were pressed into action last year. They're also very good in the secondary. Um, lockdown corners, Derek Pitts and Shaheem Battle, as well as Nickel, Tyler Baker-Williams, who is really a great hybrid cover guy out on the edge. He can also play in the slot. He can also play near the line of scrimmage. Very solid, very efficient tackler. And then you throw that or combine that in with safeties Tanner Ingle and Jakeen Harris. Devin Boykin's another one. Cyrus Fagan hopefully will put everything together this year after transferring from FSU a couple seasons ago. And again, they go deep in that secondary as well. That's just naming a few of their candidates. Um, put it this way. They have an all-ACC performer at all three levels. I don't know if any other school had that last year. Maybe Clemson because they're Clemson and they just they know defense. But Corey Durden at defensive end, and then as we mentioned, Drake Thomas at linebacker, and Tanner Engel at safety, all three were first team all ACC a season ago. They're headed and coordinated by Tony Gibson, who's a guy that Wolfpack fans and people in Raleigh should enjoy while it lasts because I can easily see any one of those top five blue bloods, the, the bread and butter programs, the, the big boys of college football, and that's no disrespect to the Wolfpack, but if one of those D coordinators at one of those programs leaves for whatever reason, Gibson has to be on a short list of reputable D coordinators at the Power Five level that should easily be promoted up. Or maybe he has aspirations of being a head coach, and that certainly is something that I could see in his future coming up. So, um, you know, you look at their schedule. This is uh, it sets up pretty nicely. However, um, there's the one game that stands out. So they start on the road at East Carolina, which some people are saying, it's upset alert, watch out. ECU, the Pirates, are a darling pick for a sleeper among group of five teams this year. But Dave Doran is a very good coach in non-conference games. He's 22-1 and one, um, uh, when he's played at home. And even though this game is on the road, he's won 14 straight against non-Power 5, uh, non-conference opponents. Um, case in point, or simply said, he starts off the season really well. So they have at ECU, then they are home against Charleston Southern, Texas Tech, who they've won four straight against in that series, and then UConn. You better get by UConn. No offense, Husky fans. And then in week five, they have to go to Death Valley and play at Clemson, which um, this is a damn determined Clemson team who wants to get back to the top of not only the Atlantic Division, but of the ACC and back into the college football playoff group. Um, so I'm chalking that up as a loss, um, but you know that all eyes on that Wolfpack team is coming in for that week five matchup. Then after Clemson, they have to rebound and play well against Florida State at home, and they travel to the Loud House out in the newly named um, Dome in Syracuse, I can't remember the name of it, some, some wireless, uh, but I'm always going to refer to it as the Carrier Dome. Then they have an off week, a bye week, and then they have to play Virginia Tech on a Thursday night. Now they've lost five straight in that series to the Hokies, but I think being on a Thursday night in Carter Finley, that place is going to be rocking. Um, the howls will be almost deafening, and I see NC State getting the W in that one. Then they have to play Wake Forest at home the following week and they've lost four or five to the Deeks and Sam Hartman my guy at quarterback out there for the black and gold he seems to have the Wolfpack's number so they're gonna have to um, come and be sharp and on their game on that one after a hopeful victory in Blacksburg then they have to travel to Louisville and play the Cardinals in Cardinal Stadium in a game what I think will be for second place in the ACC Atlantic and I'm gonna call a, a Cardinal victory right now, but I certainly wouldn't be surprised if NC State wins that one on the road. 
Um, they've won three of four against Louisville in that series, and those three victories have come by a pretty considerable margin. But again, they've got to play on the road after um, what should be a, an emotionally tough and taxing game against Wake Forest. Then they are also, they have to go to Chapel Hill the following week. So that Louisville game is sandwiched between Wake Forest and North Carolina, really NC State's two biggest rivals. I see a victory over the Tar Heels in Chapel Hill in that final game, which in my predictions puts NC State at a 10 and two mark, but six and two in the ACC. And unfortunately for them, those two losses come to Atlantic division foes, Clemson and Louisville. So as of right now, my preseason prediction is for NC State to finish third in the Atlantic, but still a 10 and two mark. And if they beat Louisville, which many people believe that they will, and they finish at 11 and one with their only loss coming to Clemson, a Clemson team that I think will be undefeated, we could be looking at NC State certainly playing in a New Year's Six Bowl, but if all the dominoes fall right and they're a one loss team and attrition knocks out the other teams in the SEC and the Big Ten, there's an outside, outside chance for a CFP appearance for NC State. So those are my thoughts, Wolfpack Nation. Don't be too brutal, don't be too harsh, and please remind me if I'm wrong. But if I'm right, then you know just take it with a grain of salt. But let me know what you think right now. Shoot me back your thoughts, your comments. Again, I'm Chappie, and this is what I know. Again, happy 4th, everybody.